<laughs> and hold it for how long? As long as it takes to get. Don't to blink. <laughs> I blinked there. Oh, there, you go. there you go. All right. Now we can reload the page. <laughs> now we can share. Oh, good. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh I, I wasn't even looking at you because i was trying to look at the camera that's funny that's a nice one <laughs> all right so let me rearrange my oh, oh i need to share that while i was there share 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 not share as technorama share as me see this it, it only took us 686 episodes to figure out we can make goofy images on this thing i know man stupid facebook i swear public share via no if it says share via you 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 got to change your profile to you i know it's it jumps into a page as the page owner which is kind of nice but rarely ever what i want to do i'll tell you well <clears throat> we can talk about it later but i that was one of the big frustrations i had was that i jumped i saw a comment or something for um dog days of podcasting i think nutty new chess um Posted something. So I went, okay, I'm going to go read it. I did. Then I, I moved along and I started uh, to comment on something totally unrelated. And I noticed the dog days, it switches the profile. Yeah. And it doesn't it change it on And topic is Trek too. Oh no. See, that's, that's aggravating. I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. No, I agreed. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, they I changed something it. and it's driving me nuts. It, it, it seems to have backed off a little bit, but yeah. Hola, K Pizza, says John Miller Jr. <laughs> we saw a license plate today. It said Y space, no, the letter Y, mm -hmm. and then Q-U-E space five, which in Spanish would be E-K Cinco. Oh, yeah. We're figuring they must have had five kids. <laughs> Poor people. We'll say a prayer for them. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's the answer I was looking for, but okay. <laughs> Shall we begin making a podcast? Yeah, let's do that. All right, here we go. In five, four, three, two. Tectorama episode 688. I don't know how I feel about this. Hello and welcome to Technorama. This is the show that takes a lighthearted look at tech, science, sci-fi, and all things geek. Woo! If you are joining us for the first time, well, you get woo! If you're joining us again, is that a Technorama you know, towel? It, um, it's gray. I don't know. We don't have corporate branded towels yet. I have an idea. Yes. <laughs> I had the same idea. Let's go have ice cream. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm Chuck Tomasi, and joining me right there is Craig Stepp. How are oh, you, Craig? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Off to a good start. Well, my my day was off to a good start until this afternoon. And just when you think you have an open afternoon, technology sat, jumps in. I sat down and decided I had a few things I was going to do, and a couple things I was going to look up, and I was like starting to mess with it. And I just happened to go to our site, and I'm like, oh, man, something. What happened was with wordpress this happens very often and i thought i had the permissions and everything set right but i guess something must have gotten through and uh kind of whacked out the css or something well, well what happened if you're interested in the technical details make uh, it quick <laughs> well we have a we have a wordpress site but it's a multi wordpress network site. network setup network site so the pro and so there's several websites uh on this one WordPress install. Mm -hmm. Well, the HT access file that says, Oh, you want Technorama? I'll give you this. And it substitutes some stuff for, you know, the addresses and everything. Well, that's normally not in there for a regular WordPress site. So whatever hacked the thing changed the HT access thinking it was changing it to a normal WordPress site. That's why all that stuff looked weird. Cause it couldn't find it. it but I, it was sort of an easy fix. It just took me a little while to kind of get my head wrapped around what was going on. And so I removed all the 
files, made sure all the permissions were right and uh, swapped out that HT access file. And then once I did put the right stuff, then it would find everything it's supposed to. Thank you, Craig. We'll make sure it's in your Christmas bonus this year. <laughs> Is it as much as the, I got last year? <laughs> <laughs> hey you know amazon gift cards are amazon gift cards i'm not going to complain right <laughs> no so it's, it's just aggravating when that happens and i i remember years ago um i was helping um oh my gosh my mind went blank uh mer lafferty yeah we were we were at um crater uh crate south which is dave slusher's uh, show he was doing on the Merle beach, you know, where it was a get together, learn how to podcast, learn how to blog, that kind of stuff, social media event. And I was down there and I remember while we were there, her site got hacked like that. And, yeah. And it's, it's automated. It's not like some, somebody hacked in, but something did get in and was able to make the changes. And I sat down with her for, I bet it was like an hour trying to straighten that out. I don't think we got it mostly straight now, but so I'm getting tired just thinking about it. All right, let's do something more fun then. Should we do right. the feedback? Yes. Let's do the feedback. Play that feedback music. Letters. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Mail, I'll mail you some sushi. <laughs> what? He says, what? Uh, he says, I'll mail you some sushi, Craig. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure that'll age well in the mail. <laughs> we'll include some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, before we get into the question of the week, I want to cover an email we got from Sweet Steve. He says, Chuck, first of all, don't pick on Craig's beard. He flies it really well and looks great. <laughs> Thank you. There's somebody for you. I suggest There's a, one. <laughs> I suggest a Movember challenge for you guys. Go full beard and not just the stash. Nope, my Movember days are over. That, I wouldn't, do, it, I wouldn't do just a mustache. Twelve. Why? Why? Why won't you do a beard anymore? Way too gray and still uh, too itchy. There's nothing wrong with a gray beard. Um. Yeah, it is. <laughs> see i i do a lot more videos for work and no. i'm keeping a consistent work product my <laughs> visage is my product we have we have quality control in this face <laughs> all right he also writes a few other feedbacks around villains replicants yes we can debate if the replicants are the villains or of or the victims in blade runner if they are the victims then deckard is the villain don't think that is the way that they were planning to portray Deckard. Hmm. They made the replicants the villains, even though they were the victims. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Bilbo, yes, you are right. Smeagol killed his next or second cousin over the ring, mm -hmm. and he was the one finding it. So now we have a really tricky dilemma. Well, Smeagol mm -hmm. killed and stole the ring from his cousin, but did that make Bilbo less of a thief? And the fact that Bilbo was employed by Thorin Oakenshield party as a burglar mm. bilbo was a thief yes that that is true uh and there is no honor amongst thieves nowadays or is what there they, he asks is there no honor amongst thieves right how were, how were they saying burglar burg, uh how are they saying that in the oh i don't know how remember. they pronounced it um yeah I, it was a little different anyway yeah well smeagol had a different way of saying most everything well i think the bottom line is whoever uh, is tempted by that ring it's it's you know they're it's up to no good it's not gonna it's not gonna end well right uh you keep the beard craig i don't care what chuck thinks i like it <laughs> oh i'm I'm, th I'm thinking about bringing it back just at least it's for a, a while by the way remember the wrong number episode that call wasn't an accident <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a lot of wrong numbers <laughs> i know all right, let's move on with the question of the week. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got this shared a little late this week, but Craig got it out on time. So we have lots and lots of really good responses. Our question last week was, in 50 years, what will people be nostalgic for? And Jack Mangan says, real meat. Yeah, right. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, that's that's the direction we need to move in. Uh, what do you got? 
Well, I did have an Impossible Burger, by the way, just to try it. Yes, and what did you think? Mm, it was a little, a little on the dry side. It was okay. I think it's pretty good. I, if you mix it in with like, if you're going to make stroganoff or something, you know, so with mixing with something, that. if if it's if it's not, I wouldn't pick it up and eat it in a hamburger or cheeseburger. Maybe I haven't tried it that way, but I've usually tried it as the the ingredient that makes other stuff. Yeah, it was like. Almost Chili. like it was a little blander than regular meat, but it wasn't. That's not to say it was terrible or anything. I mean, I'd eat it again. It's, it's all right. Save the planet. Um, One burger Craig, at a time. Craig Glasner says, <laughs> going outside and taking a deep breath without filtering. Well, he does live in San Francisco, right? And they had all those fires a couple of years ago when the whole yeah. city turned orange. It was beautiful. <laughs> right. Uh, Craig Gratzner says, Kratzer, excuse me, says um, video game consoles. You mean John Kratzer? I'm John, what'd I say? Kratzer? You said Craig Gratzer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you, someone hey, didn't get his nap today. That's for me doing a bunch of CDs and LSs in uh, Linux terminal today. Oh, yeah. Unix built, broke your brain today? Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah, Man. actually, you know what? That's, that's one thing about uh, I have a little geek fatigue on. It's like when I know I got to do a lot of typing in the terminal, I don't get excited about what I used to anymore. That's where I go for my vacations. What are you talking Shoot. about? <laughs> Not when you're trying to troubleshoot something. You go, okay, what's in this directory? What's in that directory? Let's compare them. Let's look at this. It's kind of like how people take vacations where some go to a resort and some go roughing it in a tent. Y yeah. Linux command line is like the tent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I don't hate on it. It's just like, uh, I just get, sometimes I just get tired, especially, like I said, I'm going down. I know I'm going to be going down a rabbit hole looking for something wrong or, you know, whatever. And so what, back to John Kratzer, anyway, Kratzer, what did he want? He said video game consoles. You think I'll be meeting, planning for video consoles? In, in I'm doing that now. Consoles? What are you talking about? You know, I, I would well, say you that think now. everything's going to be PC driven or I mean, you you have a. Are you talking well, about like the traditional kind, not like a PS5? Nintendo. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. well, yeah, something like that, and, I guess. Meeting, meeting people in person. Oh, I'm no, sorry. that will never end. I'm sorry, John. We're going to need further qualification on that question, uh, on that All answer. Right. Mike and meeting says, people, I mean, he says meeting people in person as well. That's what I just said. <laughs> I oh, I didn't that. hear you. <laughs> I was too busy trying to talk over you. Crazy to half duplex mode today. <laughs> you can't talk much. and listen at the same time. That's right. <laughs> Mike Robeson says non-internet dependent games. We have a theme here about gaming, by the way, and uh, things made from actual paper. Uh, they'll be pining for Technorama, the game show. <laughs> Technorama, the game show. Speaking of which, ah, okay. I, I'm sure most of our listeners are listeners are familiar with Trogdor. You know the dragon. Yeah strong bad it was like 2005 when he came out with the comic and it, it just sort of went viral and uh it's it's a lot of fun if you haven't trogdor. looked go, yeah right go to homestarrunner.com look up trogdor and uh if, if you're introduced to homestar runner and strong bad etc that's a great one to start with anyway in 2018 i don't know i was i was watching um uh, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. On, mm -hmm. on I was watching this past episode on uh, Amazon Video, Amazon Prime, and all I could think about was when the when the thatched roof cottages were on fire. I started thinking about Trogdor, <laughs> and I I started a Google search. Oh no! And I found a video from 2018. They made a a video yeah. about Trogdor the game. Yeah, <laughs> and I said this. I said it to our. Uh, Dragon Con D and D chat group on Facebook, and I said, "Oh, we we may have to play this next year and get Scott Tyler to come back." <laughs> yeah, no kid. Can so come go, back on. go look for Trogdor the board game, and you'll you should find the YouTube video from. Actually, you know what? I'll put a link to it in the show notes. How about that? It, I was laughing because the the announcer can't pronounce Trogdor probably. You can get yourself a Trogdor game. It sounds like Coach Z narrating this thing. And every yeah. time he says Tragdar, you, you hear oh, strong bad in the background. Tragdar. <laughs> yeah. It actually is a real game, by the way. What? No. Um, yeah, right here. 
so somebody made the game out of Trogdor. The, the board video. game. Yeah, it's right here. I stopped and read some of the game cards. They are they are funny. So, um, anyway, uh I guess you can still buy it. We are we are taking a week to get through this one question on the show. That's all right. You put the things in the show notes. You do you do your own thing there, big guy. That's right. Uh 50 years from now, they'll be uh looking for they'll be nostalgic for Technorama. Well, it's a good thing we're on the internet because it'll live on forever. Yeah. <laughs> Jared Lindro says driving, as if everything will be self-driving or self-flying by that point. All right. Sweet Steve says, uh, you know me. This can go pretty dark. Oh boy. Oh great. <laughs> but actually, dopamine and adrenaline kicks. Uh, guessing we will have them enhanced artificially and hmm. in an AR environment. Maybe. I, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, but if we go dark, kids. <laughs> what? We're going to be nostalgic <clears throat> for kids in 50 we're gonna, years. We're going to be born in their 20s automatically. He says, thinking children of men type scenarios. Uh, great book, by the way, by P.D. James. Okay, Actually, we have a book recommendation. When he says we'll be nostalgic for kids, my first thought was... Um, uh, Mork and Mindy's uh, kid, you know, when he was born and an old man. Oh, age yeah. backwards. <laughs> and Jonathan Winters. No, that and Jonathan was, Winters. That, that's when the show jumped the shark. Uh, uh, Jonathan Winters and Robin Williams. They were funny, but that character funny together. didn't belong yeah. in that show. Not um, exactly. It was, no. uh, John Miller Jr. says, in 50 years, we'll be nostalgic for Tide Pods. And then no, Stephen tasty ones. says, what else will we do for snacks, though? Right. Like, no, 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 kids. No. Let's see. Uh, I think I had a comment or two, and you did too. Okay. Um, yep. Go ahead. What do you got on oh, your face? Joe Fiore says, uh, Pokemon. Today's kids. I mean, not me. <laughs> I, don't, I doubt that. <laughs> John, John Brockman says, Clean water, trees, computers that don't talk back to you. Uh, Lone Guys Nice says, Being alive? Question mark. Mm, <laughs> like, in years, you'd be nostalgic for being alive. So yeah. Ooh, he's got a good point. Huh. I'm past the I wish I was alive again. Yeah. Uh, my sister says family time. No. No. Right. Well, I'm sure there will still be families having family time in 50 years. I think she's referring to your family time. Well, I'm not going to be here in 50 years. And How if I know? am. How do I'm, you know? You got an exit plan already? I, I told you, I'm, <laughs> half, I'm past the halfway point in this game. Okay. We're, we're, we're into the third quarter. In the third quarter. Uh, I watched a lot of football. Two minutes left in the third quarter. <laughs> no, it's not the two minute warning. <laughs> no. That'd be crazy. All right. That is what we have for the feedback. We'll have some more at the end of the show. As Craig puts in an editorial note to put in the trog door video. Yeah. All right. Let's do the history thing next. On this day in history for September, no, October 5th. I forgot to write wow. it in the notes. October 5th. I do remember what Wednesday is. October 5th, 2022. It's the 278th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are 87 days remaining in 2022. Get your it Christmas was, shopping done. Uh, pretty soon, yeah. yeah. It was on this date in 1905 that the Wright brothers piloted the Wright Flyer 3 in a new world record flight. 24 miles in just count them 39 minutes hey i don't think i've seen that one i've always seen the first one of course you never you never hear about the other ones this one was the one that had racing stripes on it apparently yeah all right so uh i'm sorry i was searching for it uh on october 5th 1921 the world series was first broadcast on radio and it's a hit yeah that's right <laughs> It was also on this date in 1947 that President Truman made the first televised Oval Office address. And how'd they get the screen to do right? I'm coming to you from the <laughs> Oval Office. Yeah. 60 years ago today, the first of the James Bond film series based on the novels by Ian Fleming, Dr. No, was released in Britain. Da -da -da -da. It was 56 years ago today that... It a reactor at the Enrico Fermi Nuclear Generation Station near Detroit suffered a partial shutdown. On October 5th, 1970, the Public Broadcasting Service, PBS, was founded. 1970. Doesn't seem like it was around for a lot longer than that. 
I know. Um, it's, nope. It seems like it should should have been, but yeah. Yeah, I, I remember the uh, AV cart being wheeled into the kindergarten class, beep, 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 which beep, so we could beep, watch beep, beep, beep. Sesame Street. And that like that was a new thing back when I was a kid. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that same date in 1982, the Tylenol products were recalled after bottles mm. in Chicago laced with cyanide caused seven deaths. Three of those were like in one family. This yeah. lady says she finally spoke out after all these years and, and, and uh, it was like her dad, her uncle, and her, oh, it wasn't her mom. It was somebody else in her family. Mm. Like, yikes. That scared me for a long time. You know, I think I was like, no, I'm just doing it. Now we have safety caps and safety seals and yeah. which which people. weren't on there before right, yeah, that's right. People yeah. i mean they were the, the box was glued shut <laughs> yeah that's a big help <laughs> as you could tell well, read it, on read on There's all right it was a, it was 11 years ago today that apple co-founder and ceo steve jobs passed away we wow. normally don't put deaths in but you know that one's pretty profound that's a, it seems like i'm trying to think it seems like it was not that long ago but i guess it was we are now older than he was and Michael Jackson. So yeah. well, at least I am. Mm -hmm. You're catching up there. Happy yes. birthday goes out on this too to Czech mathematician and philosopher Bernard Bolzano, born on this date in 1781. And French director and producer Louis Lumiere was born 158 years ago today. That's the closest the French you've gotten. Congratulations. French, French fries. I can say that too. <laughs> Croissant. They're not French fries. <laughs> we're not going to get into that whole thing american physicist, there you go. <laughs> american physicist engineer and academic robert h goddard yeah the rocket man whom jimmy neutron's dog was named after uh he was born on this date in 1882 and born october 5th 1892 american zoologist and paleontologist and gun owner and cereal maker remington kellogg no that's not the cereal maker guy <laughs> nor the gun guy <laughs> Elda Anderson, the American physicist and health researcher, was born on the same date in 1899. And Ray Kroc, you may know him from American Business and Philanthropist, was born 120 years ago today. From Mr. McDonald's. McDonald's. Right? Yes, right. Well, kind of, yeah. Alan Ludden, Mr. Candid Camera himself, American television personality and game show host, was born on that same date in 1917. Wow. Hmm. And also born... October 5th, American cartoonist Bill Keen. 1922. You forgot the year. He would have been 100. He was the guy who wrote the I was the trying to abbreviate it a little bit because we get some repetitive. Circus. Yes, Family Circus. That's right. Richard F. Gordon Jr., American captain, pilot, and astronaut, was born on the same date in 1929. And Pavel Pavlovich was the Ukrainian general, pilot, and astronaut, was born 92 years ago today. Popovich? Don't they make vodka or something? Yeah. There, it's fizzy, you know, just pop a pitch. Dutch physician and astronaut Andre Kuipers was is 64 today. He's not dead. He's still alive. And also turning 64 today is American astrophysicist, cosmologist, and author Neil deGrasse Tyson. Pretty cool that an astronaut and an astrophysicist were born on the exact same day. Yeah, it is. Go Neil. Go Andre. Uh, American physicist, cosmologist, and academic. Wow, another cosmologist. Sean M. Carroll was born today in 1966. Well, I guess if you were born this day, <laughs> you were you're predestined to become a cosmologist. Uh, and Canadian, American TV, and host, producer. Not American TV, host, and producer. He was American TV host and producer. Morgan Webb is 44 today. Remember her? She was Morgan, like in some of the latter episodes of the screensavers and then went over to G4. Yes, 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 I do. That's right. Okay. All right. That's uh, the, oh, the band is telling us it's time to kick this into high gear. Listener birthdays today include October 6th, John Durholt. On the 9th, we have two birthdays. Itsuko Rumki. It sounds like Itsuko. Itsuko. Well, the band beat us to the end. We did kind of dilly dally through this. Also on the 9th is Mario from New Jersey. October 10th, two birthdays, our good friend and uh, co-podcast or former podcaster, Victor Cahiao. Garrett Rafal is also on the 10th and longtime listener from a long time ago whom we haven't heard from in a long time. I just said long time, like four times. Yeah. Bruce Barr on the 11th. Happy birthday to all of you. That's the way it was on this day in history for October 5th, 
2022. And if you want to get on the birthday calendar, Craig's going to put that on the bottom of the screen. Am I? Oh, uh, yes, you I are. Am. You are. There I think you, you can handle clicking the uh, one button, right? It's not a Linux command to do that. No. Go to chuckchat.com slash birthday. We'd love to give you a shout out at the appropriate time of year. And if it's your birthday and you're not on the calendar this week, we wish you a happy birthday. All the best. Hope you get to spend time with friends and family. Our fondest wishes to you. And now out for a random sound button. I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to tap. Good startling news, everyone. Okay. Well, we do have some news. I don't know if you call this startling, but we've, we've got news that... Um, the Chinese mission uh, Chang'e 5 has returned with, they brought back some minerals and they, they I think we mentioned this before, they came back with, uh, what are they calling it, Chang'e site? Why? I don't know. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, I thought you were saying Chang'e site, why? As uh, in, no. that's something they brought back. No, that is something they brought back. Why? They call the miner mineral Chang'e site, why? Oh, why? Because they get to name it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Who's on first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, in addition, they claim that the new mineral contains helium-3, which mm. is an isotope that many scientists have touted as a potential fuel for future fusion reactors. The challenge here is we don't know how to really use it effectively yet, and that's probably a couple, three decades away. They're saying this could be the uh, the moon. The moon could be what did they call it? The new um, Arabian Peninsula. Oh, yeah. Uh, instead of oil, the, it'd be the uh, the new home for everybody trying to get their hands on helium three. But first, we got to make the. Uh, they did outline some of of the future uh, missions. They said Chang E six, which like Chang E five, will have a sample return mission focusing on the lunar south pole. It will likely attempt to bring back ice located in the permanently shadowed craters at the South Pole. And Chang'e 7, which will be an orbiter, lander, rover combination designed to prospect for water at the lunar South Pole. This mission may precede that of Chang'e 6. Wow, they're getting out of order. It's kind of like... I know. 802.11b, N, G. What? Make up your mind. Which way are we going in this alphabet? Yeah, and then there's V'ger, which is Voyager 6, and... You know, well, when did they even had, launch it? Yeah, well, psh. and and the moon <laughs> was blasted out of orbit in 1999. We're not going to go there. <laughs> Chang'e 8 said to be designed to test technologies for the eventual construction of a lunar base. So they've got their stuff together. And meanwhile, we're still sitting here waiting for Artemis to launch, which could have potentially gone off today, October 2nd. But I don't think it did. I think well, there was the hurricane and the I think the, the hurricane delayed us a little more, a few more weather delays. This article yeah. was written uh, several days before the hurricane. Actually, that uh, I was seeing, I was looking at the path of the hurricane. I think that I think Titusville, right in that area where NASA, you know, the Cape, Cape Canaveral, Canaveral got hit pretty hard, but it was same. on the south side. So yeah, still. yeah, it, it was it was a glancing blow. So good thing they did pull it off. Yes, Pat. So. Helium-3, keep your eyes out for that, because that may be our fuel source in 50 years. If we can yeah, do maybe. that and harness it. The, they did say in the article that it um, was it had some advantages, disadvantages. What was it? Let's see. Advantage. The main advantage of helium-3 fusion over fusion using tritium or deuterium isotopes of hydrogen. I'm not going to get into the whole thing about how many neutrons, protons, and call Timothy, Tim, Tim C. Smith about that. Right. Or go listen to, what was it, last year's Dog Days from 2021. Yeah, he actually, he went deep. Yeah, he starts out real simple and mm -hmm. then gets deep. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, the, the main advantage is that it doesn't create radioactive neutrons. Its main disadvantage is that achieving the controlled fusion reaction with helium-3 is far more difficult than using more conventional fuels. But it's also safer, I think I said, right? Uh, potentially. Well, once we learn how to harness yeah. it. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. By the way, uh, speaking of Tim C. Smith, um, I'm gonna send some good vibes out to him because he actually was in a bike. He's a he's a, he's a avid runner and biker. You know, just uh, I say biker. You know, um, not bicyclist. Boom, boom bike. Yeah, bicyclist. At, you know, he was in a I think he was in a race, and he got hit by a car. He got he got run over by a car. So he was in pretty bad shape. Uh, 
at first the picture of just him with his head was all gashed up. I mean, it looks like he was banged up pretty good. So anyway, some good vibes out here, out to him. I'm sorry that happened. You know, it's always a concern when I'm out running and stuff, I always try and keep an eye on cars because you never know. Who's who's texting and driving. Yeah. Well, who knows? It was a hit and run. So the guy took off. Which is even worse. I want to ride my bicycle. (laughs) Okay. Uh, From sciencealert.com, Craig has put in an article here about fascinating study gives a unique glimpse into how dogs mm-hmm. see the world. Now, this isn't a vision study. What they did is they put well, uh, sort of, a couple sort of dogs of. into an MRI machine and studied their mm-hmm. brain patterns while they watched videos, like home movies. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> well, no, not TikTok. That would rot their brains. And they yeah, would, yeah. Uh, so they, they put the dogs in there and they showed uh, people doing stuff and dogs doing stuff. And they, they checked what was happening. And they mm-hmm. discovered that uh people they said while our brain they said what are they uh, uh i lost track of where it was they, well they said they basically that... a fascinating difference between canine mm-hmm. and human perception dogs are way more visually attuned to actions rather than rather to who or what is performing those actions mm-hmm. and it says uh the video data was segmented by timestamps to identify classifiers such as objects, such as dogs, humans, vehicles, and other animals, or actions such as sniffing, eating, or playing. And uh, it says, we humans are very object-oriented, not anything to do with software programming. <laughs> the doctor who studies this I'm says, in a class all by myself. I'm putting... <laughs> Uh, I own your program a t-shirt right there. <laughs> I own two properties. Yeah. <laughs> Put some code in there. You got it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to add that to my t-shirt collection ideas. Uh, there are 10 times as many nouns as there are verbs in the English language because we have a particular obsession with naming objects. Dogs appear to be less concerned with who or what they are seeing and more concerned about the action itself. Mm-hmm. Mm. And they, they, att- they said that they, uh, the, now, this was a small study with two dogs, but this they were laying the groundwork to be able to expand this if they wanted to. But they were they were postulating that it was because of the dog's nature to um, protect themselves out in the wild. Uh, you know, they would recognize actions m- more rather than who was and actually who was doing it. Yeah. So if, you, so if I train the dog to do something, <laughs> the dog is like, here comes something about to eat me. And the human's going, I wonder what it could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to name it. Yeah. But what was cool, if you go in there and they have a sweet picture of the um, the two dogs that were in there. One of them is just laying there. And they said they were, the dogs weren't restrained. They were just laying there. They were really cooperative. I was surprised at that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Goes on at the end. says, we showed that we can monitor the activity in a dog's brain while it is watching a video to at least a limited degree reconstruct what it's looking at. The <laughs> fact that we are able to do this is remarkable. So more studies coming. You know, you know what? There's been times I had something on my phone, uh, video, and I'd show my dog, and they get or even a picture, and they always turn their head, like away from it. I'm like, how did they get these dogs to watch the video? <laughs> Every dog I've put my phone there is they're like, you know, not paying attention to it. Don't even bother trying this study on cats. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One other article. I got an email, actually. Let me read you the email because the article goes into it a little bit deeper. Should have had that open before the show. Um, Celestis, which we talked about a few weeks ago, Mm -hmm. is the world's iconic global leader in memorial space flights. Well, they're proud to announce that DeForest Kelly, best known as Dr. Leonard Bones McCoy in the original Star Trek series, will join his fellow series luminaries and fly aboard its Enterprise flight, which will establish the first outpost of humanity in deep space, carrying the ashes, DNA, and Celestis mind files. Now, here's a fun fact. Yep. DeForest Kelly was initially considered to be the uh, for the role of Spock. Yeah, I did, I did remember that. Yeah. But he refused. He then became Gene Roddenberry's first choice to play the USS Enterprise brusque chief medical officer, having worked extensively with Roddenberry on other television projects, the rest, as they say, is history. Could so you imagine? Uh, try and imagine for a second. 
Now, I'm sure he obviously would play it different than he did as a doctor, but well, and he would play it different than. But it's, it's hard Nemo. to imagine. It's hard to imagine that, though, isn't it? A different, a, a different Spock. Yeah. Well, it would be a whole different Vulcan. Well, uh, maybe at this point, it's not so hard to uh, imagine a different Spock because we've had a bunch of them now. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, and and to have DeForest Kelly, he can do the eyebrow thing. <laughs> yeah, that's illogical. No, I'm I'm glad he landed where he was at because they. He was perfect for the doctor. He did. He did it right. And that it makes you wonder who would be the doctor because the one they had in the pilot was kind of two dimensional. Well, he was a good bartender. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. So, so was so was Carl <laughs> Urban. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, he goes around stealing uh, alcohol out of people's <laughs> lockers. <laughs> yeah, nice job. I'm sure Chekhov would be really happy with that. Wow, yeah. we have just crossed over into our other show, but we're not going to go there right now. I'm sorry. It's that was a little. Su- I still think that was a little surprising. He goes, "Ah, oh, look what I found." I'm like, "Shout out to the chat room. How about we do that?" All right, John Miller Jr. We've got Mike Robeson. Hey, we've mentioned a couple of these people already in the comments. Gary Lindros, and <laughs> are you out of your Vulcan mind? I have a T-shirt that says that. Should have worn it tonight. But I try to wear my Star Trek shirts either for the cruise or our Star Trek show. And uh, apparently we have a few other people that have been popping in and out. Thank you very much for everybody joining us. If you want to join us on Sunday nights at 930 Eastern, we'd love to see you. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to have you part of the conversation. Be part of the show. Join us in the live chat. You can find us on YouTube by searching for Technorama Podcast or joining the Technorama Podcast page on Facebook. That's right. If you can still stand Facebook. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah. It has its moments, man. I'm telling Maybe you. Maybe that's what people will be nostalgic for in 50 years. No. Nah. No. Nah. I don't know about that. It's also a good time to thank our patrons. So let's play that patron music. Yeah. Not Star Trek music. At least I don't think it is. That's... No. Okay. No, it's a. <laughs> 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 it has it has the word star in it, but not what you're thinking. I'm yeah. pulling Craig's leg. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to all our patrons who make this show possible by donating as little as a dollar an episode. And that's like $3 a month in most cases. It, it's not a big, huge drain on their budget, but it certainly helps us out when it comes to paying the bills. And there are several of them. Yep. Keep track of this money very carefully. Yeah, like Thank my you. like my aforementioned uh, Christmas bonus. Christmas bonus. We'll see what's <laughs> left in the kitty at the end. Here's a dollar. Go buy you uh, a snicker. Wait, wait for Amazon dollar days. That's right. Thank you, Alexis Duran, Amber Elstad, Amy Bowen. Thank you, Avner Braverman, Ben Vaughn, Brian Brown, Chris Martinez, Chris MC, Dan D. Man Coyer, Dean Jensen, Denise Inglis, Gary Lindros. On the chat, John Clifford, John Noble, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, Gary survived. He's he's down in Florida, and everybody who was in Florida, hope you're doing well and pulling together and getting your power back online. Well, Gary's got his um, internet. Okay. He's obviously yep, good. Or he's in a hotel that offers free Wi-Fi. We don't know yet. Uh, John Clifford, where was I? John Clifford, John Noble, Yorga Shrawin, Crazy Joe Adventures. Thank you, Kyle Nishioka. I think he was number one in the list of oldest patrons. Oh. Oh, okay. Leon, Mark Kilfoyle, Matt Baum, Mike Wills. Thank you. Newest member, Paul Mackey, Saturday Morning Media, Stephen Weshy, Steve Therian, Steve Cody, Steve London, and second newest would be Tim Cook, right? That's right. I think he yep. came in right in there. So we have an even seven by four grid that is full. <laughs> Not for long, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, somebody's getting crazy ideas to uh, blow that up on us. That's right. And uh, we would also like to mention, if you want to blow that up and get it out of shape and, and get Craig's oh, CD. I added a blank row. Now we got spaces. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it feels so good with four more blanks. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Technorama podcast is where you can go to get that all. All right, let's fade that music out. The band was getting out of control anyway. Oh, I feel like I got to go have the after party after listening to that music. 
let's Great. jump into oh we've been Wait. watching some shows Hey, yeah, patrons you're the fresh you pumpkin. The fresh pumpkin puree with a true pumpkin spice latte <laughs> i had the um what was it the voodoo ranger insane pumpkin or something it was what it, yeah it, oh, it's it, an energy drink no it's a beer voodoo ranger is a beer oh voodoo ranger that's right yes yeah uh their pumpkin one boy if you like drinking your spice rack it's good because it's it's got enough spice in there to choke you like the cinnamon challenge <laughs> yeah that's a little too much nutmeg was, or whatever think, it is i think it's the um noda uh brewery in north and charlotte they did one called the gordacious and uh it's very pumpkiny very pumpkin. I don't mind the pumpkin flavor. This one was just too spicy. Yeah, so that yeah, I don't need all that spice. That much spice. But yeah, this one's actually pretty good. Uh, I mean, you pour it and you can immediately smell the pumpkin. It's good. All right, shall we move on to? Did you already play the music for it? I think you did. <laughs> Does that answer your question? I think you already did at once. But... No, I don't think. You know what? Play it one more time. John Miller Jr. says, reread that again. Patreons, you are the fresh pumpkin puree with a true pumpkin spice latte. (laughs) Control the pumpkin spice, control the universe. (laughs) There it is. Uh, Paul Muadib approves. (laughs) I love our listeners. Thank you, Mike, for that. That was that was wonderfully clever. It was like uh, we got um, some new headsets at church. Mm-hmm. You know, where you can talk to each other oh. so we're not trying to do these crazy hand signals like no lower the camera go hey, go go left. go <laughs> so they came in today and doug was doing a, a sound check you know to make sure that they worked and he said he had this little phrase that he rolled through i don't remember what it was it was like testing testing something 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 blah 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 and, and I, I i had mine i go pilot to pilot to pontius pilot <laughs> oh boy hey stick with the theme right know your audience (laughs) yeah right every every once in a while i will pull out something that i have been waiting decades to use that was one of them (laughs) oh finally i can use this after 30 years of keeping it in my back pocket well every time they said they you know they turned jesus over to pilot like really where was yeah. he flying does he have frequent flyer miles right. i'm sorry i don't mean to diss anybody's you know, beliefs at all this right point. let's move I'm on to the past that we wrote. Fun. i'm hey. having fun oh yes hey, wait, play uh, the music i did like, we, they're not <laughs> playing second possibly third time <laughs> i'm sorry all right you start all right so kim and i went last night or actually last saturday night uh, to go see Dracula. It's a radio, the radio production. It was the adaption that uh, Orson Welles did, uh, Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula for the radio. And they redid the script and had the people doing the voices and everything. And it was at the community theater in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Actually, I was very impressed with the Foley artist that was up there. Uh, when um so they had the act actors up there and they would all come up to the mics and do their thing she was over there dropping little crates and hammering on a steak you know and all kinds of stuff they even had one of the drums that you would spin and make to make the you know the wind so it was fantastic that she was doing a great job um overall it was a lot of fun um probably a little over an hour and a half maybe we were there so yeah, it was it was cool. So you know how on the Star Trek cruise, uh, John Delancey has you know the kind of the the script reading with all the celebrities, yeah. and he gets some of the studio, uh, some of the the cruisers, c- civilians, yeah, <laughs> involved. Uh, they had some of those people doing the sound effects last year. And that was oh, okay. Uh, the only problem is you're giving up a couple of afternoons for rehearsals, like. Uh, maybe i don't know that well, that it could be bad. fun but yeah that's uh that's a big ask i could be getting drunk in st thomas <laughs> but no. right I'm i got i got rehearsal with gates mcfadden <laughs> look donna we got a table read today i can't go with you on the 
this off ship excursion. Oh, she would go get drunk in St. Thomas without me. That's not, <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's no problem, not, Chuck. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> See you at the show tonight. Right. Break a leg. Yeah. So good. I'm glad you had fun with that. Uh, yeah, good? I finally got around to watching the 2018 Mission Impossible Fallout, which is on Paramount Plus. I have no idea what I was looking for, and I just came across this and went, "Oh, good, another one." Uh, fun action movie, as as all the other ones are. I think what is this number six or something? Uh, full of tropes. You're going to see lots of car chases through European cities. You're going to see people running along roofs. You're going to see, uh, oh, just crazy stuff. You know, oh, is this the one where he's hanging out the side of the building? No. Was no. that the previous one, I think? I think that was the previous one. With the, oh, with the, this is this is the one looks. with um, Henry Cavill. Helicopters. Yes, with Henry Cavill. And as soon as I, he showed up on screen, I went, he's the bad guy. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know he's going to be the double crosser. I'm sorry yeah. if I spoiled that for anybody, but hey, the movie is now four years old, hey, so get over it. That was the the um, the bathroom fight scene was pretty good. The the whole bathroom scene was just funny. Yeah. Uh, and yes, of course, at the end, the bomb at one second. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going, could this get any more full of tropes than it already is? I know. Oh, man. So it was, but it was still a fun action movie. The visual effects were really good. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I remember, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but yeah, it was, it was really good. I thought I enjoyed it. So my next one on the list was I watched some of the monsters <laughs> i heard this was terrible I, it, it, you, right. you and crazy joe actually agreed on a bad movie if you know me there's lots of movies that i've watched that other people didn't like <laughs> but i was like yeah it's not too bad no <laughs> this was this was not <laughs> one of those uh the only saving grace from it was um let me hold on a second. i gotta pull up the cast um was uh the few minutes i watched it daniel uh robach he he plays um uh grandpa and oh right. my god he was channeling grandpa i'm not kidding you al he, lewis he was channeling al lewis for sure he was he was nailing it if that's if that's what they wanted was redoing the characters exactly he was he was it he was nailing it so uh but other than that i couldn't watch the whole thing i, I was just like I, it just didn't do it for me. And I was, I went in thinking, okay, it's going to be campy. I'm going to, you know, I like the monsters, you know, did, did you like the monsters? Originally? Yeah, I did. I, I thought it yeah. was pretty funny when it was you know, yeah. original. It just, this just, just, I couldn't watch it. It was, I mean, it was a cheesy campy 60s show that, mm -hmm. you know, like the Beverly Hillbillies. So, you know yeah. what I, I suspect, and I, I wouldn't mind, I would give it another shot, but there were some people that said, you know what, if this was, in black and white, like the show. Oh, that's an idea. It would have it would have had a different tone, but it wasn't. And the colors were over the top. It was very vibrant. Did they uh, have canned laughter in the movie? No, they didn't have canned laughter. That's probably why it wasn't funny. I mean, the the, the yeah sitcom maybe from the sixties had canned laughter in it. I would I would watch it again if they did a if the black and white version. Uh, but I think Rob Zombie said that he was not allowed to do a black black and white version of this. So that's why they didn't. They, you know, so otherwise I'll, I'm going to try again. <laughs> Mike Robeson, stop asking, can there be more? They will hear you and add more. Yeah, that's right. Stop, stop, stop. So. Uh, all right. My other one is Uncharted. It's a 2022 film. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim started... and I watched this a, a few months ago. Yep. This was on Netflix. Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg, Antonio Banderas, Sophia Ali. It's it's based, I understand, on a board game. Now, I didn't know there was a board game called Uncharted. And they said that uh, video game. Tom Holland played the character of Nathan Drake, like pretty much to a T. So take it for what it's worth. I was reading some of the comments on various review sites. The uh, I didn't really care for this movie a whole lot. I thought it was. It was pretty thin. Again, another adventure movie. Uh, when they got to the point where they uh, discovered Magellan's two ships inside sure. a cave on a sandbar, and within minutes, they dug them out. Yeah. 
They didn't tip over. They put slings under them and helicoptered them out through a perfectly sized hole in the cave. Well, how do you think and, it, the ships got in there? And they've got cargo helicopters flying around with these ships under them and they're crashing into the air, et cetera. So I'm like, oh, this is just beyond ridiculous at this point. Yeah. So, However, I, the other ridiculous stunt was when the, the box crates were hanging out the back of the plane. Yes. It was a little ridiculous, but I thought it was actually done pretty well. Uh, I liked that whole scene. That was um, how the movie opens up. Is yeah. Tom Holland is kind of waking up and he's barely hanging. I think it's in the trailer, his, actually. What? Yeah, well, it's in the trailer. Yeah. And then, the, and then when he finally gets back up there, there's a car that comes out and pushes him out. And you're like, okay. I got hit by a car that yeah. drove, flew out, fell out of a plane. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was okay. It wasn't. Yeah, it was. You know, wasn't the best. Oh, the one thing I couldn't quite figure out, jumping back to Mission Impossible. Okay, so you knew Henry Cavill, Walker, was, you know, going to double cross him. Mm -hmm. And he was working with the lady from the CIA who was also trying to convict him and say, oh, you're um, John, not John, not John Falk, John, it wasn't John Doe, it was something else. And, uh, but suddenly at the end, she comes through and, and and like now she's okay. They completely forgive and forget about you know, this lady who was like, no, you Plot hole. you set up Walker to be to infiltrate. It's like that that just kind of went what? And Tom at church goes, that's when you just give up and say it's a movie. I'm just gonna yeah <laughs> yeah Either go Uncharted, with it or don't. Uncharted was uh it was was a bit thinner than. Uh, mi6 i mean it was it was almost like it was trying to be national treasure ish yeah. you know oh we've got to go find a treasure uh there's all these clues only one guy can decipher a lot of this stuff um uh, it was and and you don't really know who to trust along the way at least in national treasure you knew who the bad guy was and his team was with him pretty much the entire time but right this was uh, this was a little over the top uh, I, I thought Antonio Banderas did a pretty decent job. Yeah. Oh yeah. I thought he did a good, uh, good job too. Um, okay. So the, uh, the last one I've watched, um, was, uh, I've been watching a lot of stand up lately mm -hmm. and, uh, watched Pat Oswalt. Uh, he said, we all scream. As I started as, watching as this. The, I got about 20 minutes in. <laughs> did he did was, you stop? Was, did you stop uh, where I think you stopped at? Right after. He got done explaining about the barn and the clowns. I know. <laughs> I was like, I, he he took this metaphor that I've never heard before. I'm not going to spoil it for you because it's really don't. funny. And he tore it down and rebuilt it like seven ways from Sunday. And it was so funny watching him go. Well, no, no. Well, well, yeah. How how would you, you know, like? He's thinking and contradicting himself. No, I think yeah. that could work. And it was just, it was pretty dang funny. I've got to, I got to finish the rest. Of it the was movie. funny. But that bit went on a little it, too long. Yeah, it was. It was at yeah. some point. It's like, okay, now you're just getting disturbing. But there, but there's some good stuff in there, and so uh, I would recommend that. I'll tell you something else I've been watching, um, which I kind of got stuck on. I think I saw a couple of comedians on. They were on Facebook from. Um, they're they're part of the dry dry bar comedy, mm -hmm. which they they have a whole YouTube channel, and there's like tons of specials that they posted on there from the, I think they're based in Utah. So they do their shows and they'll, some of them, some, um, some of them are small clips, like three, five, seven minutes. Some of them are 30, 40 minute sets and they're kind of fun to watch. And so I, had, I subscribe to it and there's a lot of good stuff in there. So uh, I would recommend that too. go check it out. Dry bar comedy. All right, now you know what we've been watching. One more thing that we've been watching, which is actually in the Geek Library. You like the way I tied the, uh, the, the pass me the remote into the geek library. There is a video that we have in here about a robot that has been trained 
to become a construction worker. And I went, oh boy, there go some of my relatives occupations. <laughs> uh, they, they've trained this biped, almost human shaped robot mm -hmm. to hang drywall. Now, I'm I'm guessing it's fine if you just have a standard four by eight sheet or these look more like four by six. Yeah, you're not going to get technical and do some uh, corners. Yeah, some cut uh, out the light corners. sockets. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it looks like it's pretty straight up. Hey, let's make a wall. You imagine, wow, the robot did great. Wait a minute. We, we're supposed to have outlets in this room. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to have a door. <laughs> yeah. How do you get in? How do you get out? Yeah. So it, it it's interesting to see what they've built. Uh, th there's some fun comments in here too. Uh, there's there's one comment that says, "Yeah, but can they drink beer and catcall women?" <laughs> I'm sure you can program it. Just seven more upgrades, and they'll drink beer and be women. I like how the robot reaches behind him, behind himself, and pulls out the uh, the nail gun or it whatever it feels using. like this robot could have been a little more fit for purpose. It looks like it's tried to look too human like it doesn't need two legs and two arms to hang drywall and and you know the the cameras don't necessarily well, need to be mounted in a traditional headpiece so well, i don't I'm know what sure. they were aiming for it doesn't well, feel like it was built for I'm, this purpose i'm not sure they built it just for this purpose that's the whole thing so you know maybe yeah. they want to give it some other jobs as well you could program it to do a bunch of different things because if you were going to hang drywall you'd need well there's the drywall you got to hang on a nine or ten foot ceiling, so you'd want extensible legs. So you could just pick up the drywall, go. Yes. You know, I do and, like and have have the have the screw gun in built in, mm -hmm. so you don't need to pull yeah, out. Yeah, just pull for this open and his hand and, and right. Yeah, there was um, uh, <laughs> well, actually, last Friday I don't know if you saw it. Do you see Tesla uh, showed their robots? I heard about it. I haven't seen it yet. You can go catch a. Uh, an abbreviated version on, I think CNET had one or The Verge or something like that. Anyway, so they had they showed the robot and it actually articulates pretty well. Uh, the one that was functional that actually walked out on its own, um, you can still see where it had it needs some work to tighten it up. Like it had some uh, hoses that were probably not in a good spot because you don't want those kind of things just dangling under the arms of the robot. But uh, then they showed the version that's more to their uh, design, which is more sleek. Yeah. But it didn't actually what this one didn't actually walk, but it the torso would move a little bit. It actually looked pretty cool. And they showed uh, what the robot sees, and it was actually one of them was that the video he was watering a plant, and it saw the water can, and you can see where each objects were to color different, and they could identify it and pick it up and. He said they're, they're going to run about 20 grand or so, <whistles> which if you've got um, some places in your factory or something like that, that are dangerous for people, it's not, a, it's probably not a bad deal. Yeah. I, I wouldn't count this particular robot that hangs drywall, uh, a, a threat <laughs> yet to, to the regular Humanity. industry. Cause it's slow. Yeah. So they picked up the drywall and then to move three feet forward was like little step, little step, little step, little step, little step, little step. Like, oh, well, crying out loud. Well, I showed uh, I showed the Tesla video to my wife and then I said, that's kind of impressive. It was the first time it actually walked on its own on stage. Then I said, well, look at this. And I showed the Boston Dynamics one where the, the two robots are running the little obstacle course. Yeah. You may, have you seen that one? um the dogs oh, we, no. we've seen no no they're they're humanoid oh okay but they're you need to see that because that they're actually running on a course with um like the boards are at a different at at an angle so they have to run across them and they did backflips everything kim's like does that is that even real i'm like yes those are real uh those are real robots she said it doesn't look real no i know that they're they're coming for us <laughs> but yeah and that takes us to the top of the hour how cool is that we got this down pretty cold thank you everybody who joined us tonight online checking out the show or watching it later or listening to it in podcast form we appreciate it we're going to leave you with one more question how soon before 
They create robot mimes. Is it broken or walking against the wind? <laughs> hey, what if he was just going through the motion of picking up this sh- uh, the sheetrock, but they had, didn't have it in there? Yeah. It just <laughs> he's doing the he's doing the stuff in a glass box. There you go. And by the way, no libraries were harmed in the making of this series. <laughs> the geek right. library. Excellent. Right. All right. Our question of the week, our official question of the week for you is which TV series has aged like milk? Yeah. Does that mean it didn't do well? It got sold? right. Uh huh. How much, how much, uh, aged milk have you drank? <laughs> I've, I, I think when I was stuck in Australia, I found a few TV series that did not hold up well. Okay. So, um, all right, we'll talk more about that. We should get some good responses off of social media for that one. Yeah. I thought, uh, I was trying to think of a good one, but, uh, uh, there's some, there's some, there's some dogs out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That takes us to the end of the show. So that means I get to play <laughs> this. Mike Robeson says it's called cheese. <laughs> yes. Cheese is actually just controlled spoilage. Hey, Alf. Oh, look at there. Very good answers. Crazy Joe would probably disagree with you on that uh-huh. one. Anyway, uh, visit us or call us on the listening line. 707-530-2428. That's 707 530 chat. How convenient. Uh, or email us, technorama at chuckchat.com. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Give us an answer to your question or comments about this show. What did we get right? What did we get wrong? What do you want to comment on that just didn't make any sense? Or we should elaborate. Or if you've got an idea yeah. or spotted an article, we'll be glad to consider putting it in the show like we have done many, many times in the or past. Or if you can do better than us, you can host the show. Or you can start your own podcast and then That's we can right. retire. No, I'm like that. Anyway, give us a binary high five, Craig. All right. One, zero, one. Thanks, everybody. Take care. The audio recording has concluded. Laters. Later, John Miller. Happy dance. Take a drink. Yeah, I need to. (sighs) Drinking water this evening. Me too. I'm doing Sober October. What? Are you? Yep. Is that a thing? It is. Just like uh, Dry July. Oh, I'm already out. <laughs> I went out with a bang on the 30th and I said, I'm I'm going to do this. It'll, it will help me. I After Dragon Con, my weight crept up a few pounds. So I'm just going to knock it down. And I said, well, one easy way is knock out the alcohol for a while. Yep. I'll drink to that. <laughs> not <laughs> helping. Yeah. So well, this is this is an easy month too because it's not the holidays. You don't feel like you're socially pressured. I'm not traveling. I'll be traveling mm-hmm. in November, but I'm not traveling now. So this should be pretty easy. It's just be long. It was. It was like, oh man, there's a football game on today. I could so go for some no hey, go for some beer. Look, what are you going to give up in November? Beards. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy one yeah chuck's giving up beards not giving up podcasting can you grow a beard i'm curious can i grow a beard yes yeah. i've yes, never I seen you grow a beard i know i've seen you with a picture of that one when you, you look like some dude from the 70s after curly uh, hair and the beard oh the long hair beard from the the 2003 era yeah three was... i thought it was longer than that um no. You had you had a full head of curly hair and a beard. Yeah, that was two, like 2003. It looked like you should be driving a truck in the 70s. 2002, 2003. That was my uh, terrorist days. <laughs> terrorist. Whoa. <laughs> no, that's not a good time to be a terrorist. <laughs> that's why I was so funny watching a, year, a, a few years later when I did get a cut and I still had those pictures in my... Um, in my passport because like my passport was in 2002 so my hair was pretty long i didn't have the beard in that picture but you know they get to the security checkpoint the the customs and the passport guy would look at the passport yeah, look yeah. at me look at the passport look at me you know it's just like doing this double triple yeah. take thing going all right you can go <laughs> it's not sure if it's me or not right that was like one of those mission impossible moments like did you take your mask off
Just scan my GPS chip. I've got my shoulder. <laughs> it's yeah. right here on the back of my elbow. Yeah. That's right. Boom. All right. We are going to conclude the video broadcast of this. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and record our Patreon show. So, again, a reminder, if you're not a patron and you'd like to find out what this missing ingredient is, it's kind of like a backstage pass. We're just going to chill out after the show, release this on Monday, release the regular audio podcast on Wednesday. And uh, if you want to be part of that, you want to listen to what it's all about, uh, patreon.com slash Technorama podcast. So until then, everybody take care. Stay safe. I'm going to try and hit this end broadcast button twice. That's one. That's two.